Hello, everyone. Welcome to Maison en L'Objet. Um, thank you all for coming and uh, to, uh, yeah, coming to this discussion, looking at the future of hospitality design and uh, also this year's uh, Accord Design Awards, um, which we've had some very uh, interesting and exciting submissions for. Um, I've had the privilege of having uh, looked over a few of the submissions and uh, it's been, the talent this year has been amazing. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm Roddy Clark. I'm a design journalist and I focus a lot of my work on different areas of design, but predominantly uh, the, so the positive social and environmental impacts that design can have. Um, and I work for a number of different titles uh, internationally. So I think looking at this year's Accord Design Awards, which is now in its eighth year, it's a global um, competition for architecture and interior design students from across the globe. And this year's edition is celebrating the 60th birthday of Sofitel. And applicants were asked to reimagine a new hotel for the brand to reinvent the next generation of luxury hospitality while animating the guest journey through immersive, contemporary and conscious design. Something that's very topical in today's industry. And um, joining me to discuss this year's awards, we have the Global Senior Vice President of Brand Design for Sofitel, Sofitel legend, emblems and M Gallery at Accor, Elodie Noel, and architect, painter, interior designer, and also the head judge of this year's awards, Lazaro Rosa Villalan, and his business partner, Mariano Moreno. So we're gonna get a deep dive into the awards, but also what the future of hospitality looks like today. Um, so coming to you first, Elodie, if you can um, give us a bit of a sort of deeper introduction as to the work that you do at Sofitel. It's, it's already, it should be already done. Hello, uh, bonjour. I'm very pleased to meet you all and to be together with you on this stage, together with uh, Lazzaro, Mariano and yourself, Roddy. Um, this year, it's been a very intense year. And of course, uh, uh, I'm happy to introduce myself. I'm uh, the head of design. So design uh, being really my passion for the last uh, over uh, 20 years plus. I'm the interior designer myself and I got along hospitality throughout all my careers. So for the past decades, I've really been working on a lot of projects and more and more going to the, towards the side of hospitality. I joined ICOR six years ago this week, actually, so it's also my celebration. And uh, this is a very uh, interesting day today also for you, I know. Um, we're very pleased. Uh, so just as a head of design, we're looking into the brand strategy, how we want to embody the future of the brand we have. In ICOR, we have 46 brands. And uh, I'm leading uh, Sofitel, Sofitel Legend, which is uh, treasures among our beautiful brands. Uh, Emblems, which is a new collection brand, and M Gallery. So with this in mind, uh, we are looking at uh, uh, currently a network of 240 hotels and a lot of uh, new opportunities coming. So it's very uh, booming. Amazing. And this year's awards, how did it align with the brief? How did it align to the Sofitel experience itself? Well, Sofitel is a brand which is uh, truly uh, passionate about design. Uh, so, and it also has really strong uh, exper experimental pillars. One is about the service quality, and this was in the brief something which was extremely important to us, how the uh, students would have actually embodied the, the research to the guest experience. It's about heartfelt uh, hospitality. It's about uh, a genuine uh, committed luxury, and for us, this engagement towards luxury uh, with the new eyes on green and environmental responsibility is also extremely important in the brief. So all, all these pillars and the art. The art was also uh, tremendously important, uh, which is part of the immersive feeling that we have in Sofitel, uh, moving for, from a, maybe a perception of a brand which in the past uh, could have been uh, very French and very um, blend. Today we're moving into a very contemporary and still um, luxury and uh, elegant uh, with a French zest. And do you feel that was captured with the, what the applicants sent through? I must admit that uh, we looked into over 20 schools, over 100 projects, and uh, it's been a shock. I have to say that a lot of the students all over the world, because uh, we had really an uh, international uh, overview from uh, New Zealand, from South Africa, from Dubai, and everyone was able to embrace 
a bit of France, which was already a first uh, glimpse to our uh, perception. The second part was really about creativity, and they all put a lot of passion, and I think this is uh, why we're so proud of the, the connection and the genuine connection between all, and the innovation, which was also for us uh, a key moment. So really uh, randomly going through this project has been a very intense, uh, very exciting journey. It started actually a year and a half ago uh, before we're here all together on this uh, panel. Amazing. Um, yeah, and it's been, from, the, from what I've seen, it looks the, the wealth of talent is, is amazing, coming from all, all corners of the globe. So it's really exciting to see. Um, and coming to you, Lazaro and um, Mariana, it's, um, it would be good if you could just introduce your work in the studio as well to the audience and just explain a bit more about the projects that you get involved in. I am... I might start with it. Um, so we have, a, um, actually, currently we have two studios working worldwide for over 20 years. Uh, one of them is situated in Barcelona and the other one in Madrid. And then we are opening some uh, other offices in uh, very, very soon in uh, the US and also in Dubai. Uh, Lazaro is the creative director the main uh, creative force on the studio. Well, I have to say that I'm interior designer by accident because really I'm a painter. I study fine arts and I made a project by accident because I, I had to make a break 20 years ago. I, I went uh, to Formentera Island to make a nice restaurant and it was so successful, so it changed completely my life. So it's, uh, we, 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 I can say without... Uh, arrogance that we create a sort of a, a steal of, uh, from, the, from the islands, you know? And, and then from this moment, uh, was, we had, a, we, we had a, a high ascension to, to make a lot of projects all over the world from, uh, from zero. In fact, it's, uh, I have to say that it's, um, I am a, an, an, interior by, an interior designer by instinct. But it's it very crazy because I, I became a, an, an office. That, that is why it's my name in, in my office. But it, we are a big team with 220 architects and designers and um, graphic designers. And it's, uh, it's crazy how we are right to this point. And we were very, it was a honor for us that you, uh, Sophie Ted, invited us to, to make to be part of the jury of, uh, for the awards accord. That really is our, uh, is our speciality. Or the, or the world of, uh, of the, the hospitality, is, mm. uh, I think it's the thing that's more changing right now in all the industry. In that there's a time that is mixing all the The orders, I don't know in English how it's in, but sorry, my English is terrible. And, and now we, we can, we, we, we are trying to make a, an upgrade and a, a new design of a, because a restaurants, reality uh, in general, retail and enjoying nightlife is changing absolutely. It's mixing. This is uh, the new generation of uh, hotels, and I think that's to be part of uh, the jury of people that really are thinking. How will be the new generation of uh, of hotels is a mm. is a honor. We love to be. And that you know the hospitality experience is changing. The world has changed massively changing, over the yeah. last five years. How we're you know moving through spaces, how we're engaging with each other has changed. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you saw the future of hospitality in this year's awards? Being the head judge. I must say, first of all, we, we also wanted to say we are very excited and thankful because everyone has to start at some point. And as Lazaro said for him, it was, it was more uh, a matter of talent. Um, uh, it's great that uh, students have the opportunity Sophie Taylor is giving to them to break through into this very competitive world. Uh, through this competition and uh, we are very excited and thankful to be part of it and then on on the other uh, side we also think there's a lot of uh, talent in between the the participants on the uh, on 
the uh, competition. We have seen how they develop in a very precise way and visually they are uh, they are very uh, forward uh, compared to uh, some other uh, professionals and uh, we think they, they manage very well technology um, and on the other hand they still uh, lack a bit of experience because they're very young uh, so but that will come for sure they need to live a little bit more yeah. but there is a lot of talent for them, there's a for lot sure. of talent and we uh, we saw a lot of uh, new ways to make real presentations in, in that way really the, the new the new students uh, they did an incredible job really we we love it but it's a lot of talent yeah talent. and do you but think you know these young people these people that if they had to design uh, they had they, they, they need have more opportunity to visit more hotels to travel you know it's a uh, it's complicated when you we are um you're fresh from the oven of the university yeah. that you can uh create something uh which is like really adapting to the customer needs or and we and we are we are seeing on the way project, uh, we, in the point of view of adults of people that really we we travel we we, ha we have a lot of hotel mm -hmm. experience Normally for young people, it's yeah. complicated, but, it, but anyway, the, the level of uh, the project was super good, super, super high, even, even almost professional. It's, it's really interesting to hear you say, and do you think there's that, when it comes to students working on in this way, where they have this vision, mm -hmm. um, because they're new to an industry, they're excited, and they've got, you know, there's no sort of cap on their vision. Um, and it gives them that sort of broader outlook that they can kind of imagine the wildest dreams mm -hmm. in, a, in a way. Whereas obviously when we're working in the profession, we're governed by budgets and timelines and timescales. Um, and working in this way, it really does help us envision what the future could look like. Did you feel that, Elodie, with the, with the applicants? Was there? Yeah, I, I think the applicants, as you say, uh, have been really uh, looking into uh, transforming our vision. Uh, I think they are all with uh, very talented eyes. Uh, question, you know, the the statu quo that we could have feel, and also uh, they were certainly uh, very open. Sometimes they were, you know, playful and t and uh, even even you know out breaking our uh, expectation because they were looking into something uh, way more uh, personal, or maybe because we are a big uh, corporate company, so it's also very refreshing to see uh, new uh, talent showing maybe a very intimate perception of creativity. I think uh, some have pushed the boundaries uh, and you'll see uh, some of the project on the screens. I think this is very essential that we, we can understand uh, where they want to take us. Certainly there is a, a, a background of community. You can feel that communal spaces, and this is why we picked on this uh, particular brief walking really on what is the new hotel uh, guest journey lobby experience, what we want to give uh, through this uh, new way of uh, being together. Uh, as you just said, you know, hotels are changing, the hospitality world has changed. Uh, in, in the past, Sofitel was a brand which was very much oriented to business. And in the, in the coming time, it has been completely changing during COVID. And now we, we see that the shift is already there. It's much more about leisure. So the hotel is a pleasure, is a place for business and at the same time for leisure where people actually uh, intend to stay longer and to have much more uh, wellness experience, green experience. And I think this is where the, the students were able to actually present this new vision they had for, uh, for us. Amazing. And, and obviously, Lazara, you've worked with Sofitel, um, you know, on... on multiple projects um, you've also d most notably the it's the Sofitel legend hotel in Panama City that you've worked on yes as a designer how do you interpret the Sofitel experience and bring that into the interiors well for, for, um, the first um, well, the first the first of all we have to study how is the philosophy of the of Sofitel we try to look for all the standards that the, the brand has for, for to create the, the DNA of a, and, and the, the customer could feel the, the DNA in the in the hotel and in the Panama the Panama project that is in the middle of the Casco Viejo is all part of Panama 
was very funny because uh, normally we had to create a sort of a storytelling with all the points that we made. Even that it's a legend, legend Sofitel that is more historical, it's uh, more, more rich with more. And in this case, it was funny because uh, it was a ruin. You know, it was a building completely desolated because uh, it, was, uh, it was the former uh, Club Union. It was the peop it was uh, like the, the high society of, uh, of, of the old Panama made a social life. And when Noriega goes to the power, he touched it and he, he, he used it like house and, and headquarters. So when he went back, he, when the, they removed it, the Noriega time, it was copied. Ruined. Ruined. <laughs> Sorry. And so we had to invite it. We had to invite the whole history. So it was easy in this case because uh, part of the DNA of the brand, of a uh, Sofitel brand, is uh, the French. We'll just hold the. Uh, it's, a, it's a French touch. It's, a, it's to try to, to, you know, to bring a sort of French flower, flower, and. It was easy because in Panama there was a there is a there is a there is a pretty there is a pretty French heritage. So we we went in advance a couple a couple a couple weeks and we were lucky to be invited to most of the colonial old houses of uh, people that they could they could keep it. So we met a lot of, uh, we, we take all this information and then we bring some details with uh, artisan. We found artisan from, from, the, from the country and, and around because uh, Panama is a very small country. And then with uh, some Spanish colonial touches, uh, I think that we create a jewel. And for me, it probably is the best hotel in Panama. No, there's, there's not a chance. <laughs> if I can say, absolutely. We, we got a lot of Even awards. It was a very long, it was a very uh, long project. <laughs> we had a lot of stops. It was, uh, it was crazy, but it really is one of the jewels of uh, the area. But I think it's capturing uh, very much also uh, the fact that we want to elevate local savoir-faire the way that we're working much more with uh, local craftsmen, with artisans, with really uh, the hand uh, directly li linked to the culture of the place where we're going. This is something which is growing, but it has always been embedded in the Sofitel culture. And I think this is also why we bridge so well with you and also with the younger generation, because we're able to create this community of uh, wider thinking, not just the designer and the owner of the place, but certainly looking into a much bigger network. And I think with the uh, ESG environment that we have, we're also looking into developing uh, ethical work uh, with broader communities, having really uh, give back to local communities, which is essential to uh, the way we work generally. We work with designers from all over the world, but we also want them to be extremely relevant to the property. And I think uh, this is for us also a common honor to have you uh, together with us for this, uh, this year's special, but also for the projects, because we, we really work with people who are dedicated, not just big names or just people who love to storytell, but really people who have genuine approach. And I think for a younger generation, that's exactly what we want to tackle is really uh, do not, you know, uh, of course, everyone is inspired, but be yourself. This is probably uh, why, why we work so well together and uh, why we'll work with uh, others, I think, for sure. And it's, how do you balance that? Because obviously you're a global brand, you've got hotels all across the world, but you put your own local spin on the hotels. How do you balance that with keeping it a Sofitel sort of brand experience mm -hmm. whilst a, keeping it local? Yeah. That's probably uh, one of the very uh, tricky parts, and uh, also very exciting. I think this is where we can uh, look into finding the right alchemy. For me, uh, it's not necessarily the right designer is from the place. Maybe it's someone who has a background and a, or an experience of a local con country, uh, which will create something unique. For example, you've seen maybe on the screen, but we just opened this week a Sofitel in Africa, in Benin, in Cotonou. And we designed it together with the Sundukovic sister who are uh, from Russia, so not at all from Africa. And they managed to really capture completely the, the, the beauty of Benin. 
uh, bringing a bit of ethical, uh, ethnical, even craftsmanship inside. And also together with them and the country, uh, we were able to create a unique collection in the hotel. We work with the, the Museum of Art, the Art Gallery of Benin. And over there, there is more than 300 art pieces. So you, you really bring a complete new guest journey. We're not talking just about the lobby or uh, a place to, to rest, but it's really a place where we actually you walk into the culture, you open the door to a new uh, discovery. The, so the journey and the travel starts already inside the hotel. And I think this is where uh, hotels are being successful if they really bring you inside the culture already and make you feel like you want to discover more and stay longer, not just for your business stay, but for sure to be uh, much more relied to the country. And, and you touched on sort of ethical craft and, and sustainability is also a sort of big part of your design ethos and philosophy. How have you sort of adapted and changed over the years to make way for that? So we, we, we're, I think we, we keep adapting and we keep trying to uh, look into the future trends. Uh, it's uh, also at the group level. We have a high, high uh, commissioning. We are going for net zero carbon in 2050. So we're working with all the design and technical services uh, team cr across the world. We are, uh, we are a strong uh, team, so we're one on luxury and one on the other brands. And together we're working really hand in hand with partners uh, to take them to, you know, through all the, uh, let's say, back of house, which is extremely technical, but at the same time, bringing in the new technologies. We're working also that technology will support, in fact, with uh, all these new standards, the guest journey. So it should be seamless. It should be with uh, also a strong investment, but at the same time, with a dedication to, to the guest experience and the guest journey. We're working a lot on uh, uh, of water. Uh, monitoring the water, of course, on the waste management. We got rid of the plastic, uh, uh, single-use plastic in our hotels. So all of this, uh, of course, is uh, being operated throughout all the, the projects we lead and we, we keep renovating the network. We also have a conscious development strategy. We, we try to go uh, also uh, very much into conversion because, of course, uh, conversion is, uh, is uh, much more... Um, let's say a respectful, uh, rather, whereas new construction are maybe more demanding for water. So we have a very sensitive approach to what we can do. And at design level, of course, uh, we push for more biophilic design. I think we got beautiful projects representing this uh, through the competition. We're pushing it through our brands. We have uh, a lot of uh, brands which are really engaged. We have, uh, of course, on the luxury side, but also uh, Greet, which is about uh, second life, giving a second chance. We have really uh, Mercure, who is also Novotel, is partnering with water and the ocean. So there is a lot going on uh, uh, in front towards the, the guests and also in the background with uh, partners and owners and investors. So it's really a, a massive uh, uh, alignment and commitment of all the artists, which is the team in ACO. And we are 300,000 people working hand in hand. So we try to make an impact uh, with our hotels. Yeah, fascinating to hear. I think one of the points from the brief of what the, uh, in the awards was about animating the guest journey. How do you envisage the guest journey to continue to change in the future? Obviously, it's changed quite a bit in recent years, but what do you envisage that to look like, and how do you think that will impact the design of hotels going forward? Yeah. So we basically think um, the, the main um, trend uh, of using of, uh, like, animation of the common parts of a hotel uh, is going to go uh, through a lot of changes in the future because the use, uh, the destination of those areas are going to uh, entertain uh, like a lot of people, maybe guests of the hotels, but also people coming from the local, uh, uh, from the location where the hotel is being placed. And there is a, a wide range of uh, original ideas we have seen on the on the projects that we have seen, like related uh, to fashion or to um, bars, uh, kind of music, uh, entertainment, uh, theatrical kind retail. of ideas, uh, retail. retail as well. And uh, so we think this is one of the of the main um, the the hot uh, ideas um, for the future of the transformation of the hospitality because uh, then the hotel is not only a place where you go to stay and sleep when you're traveling 
but it's a place that uh, it's made for social interaction, not only for the visitors, but also for the local community. And uh, this big idea of creating community is something that it's also developing inside the hotel uh, creators. And in design, we have seen uh, many, many different ideas on the, on the students, on uh, different projects. Um, I remember uh, that uh, very interesting uh, kind of uh, retail uh, fashion uh, uh, idea from uh, the Australian group, I think. Uh, and in that kind of uh, retail area, you could be, um, you could be taking the measurements uh, through a, um, a system, an interactive system, and then you could uh, choose the items you want to buy or not or try. Uh, depending on that measurements and like you see yourself already with that uh, with that garment on you and it's a very very interesting and original idea I think that the people the young people they don't see they they don't see the hotels like uh, just bed and breakfast you know I think that they they are considering the, the hotels in as Mariano said like a social club no a place where interactive we, we make an interaction with uh, with uh, the locals and and for example I remember more examples of the of the project that we we saw the one in Copacabana that was it was a, it was a whole during the morning and then it, it was changing yeah. uh, the activity and then during the night it was a cabaret like a Brazilian cabaret so the, the, this is the, the, the future, I think it's the, it's the people. It's because normally the hotels are based in the best location in every country, in, in every village or cities. So it has sense that it's not just, uh, and it's uh, the way that uh, the locals and the, the visitors, they could uh, have any, kind of, any chance of uh, having any contact. So for, for them, I think for the students, they, they, they were seeing these spaces like this, more than just a hotel. Yeah, it's because they're becoming destinations, and, and I think what's really, from what I sort of gathered from the awards, is that I think people are wanting, when they travel, to feel like they belong somewhere and belong in that city. And, and the hotels, you know, that we're talking about this kind of experience where they're offering, you know, multiple sort of, uh, yeah, experiences in, in one building, you can really sort of integrate within local communities. And you're seeing that more and more from your guests as well. Yeah, I think our guests today are waiting for the hotel uh, much more, expecting from the hotel much more. Um, entertainment, for sure, is, uh, is certainly uh, growing. So for us, uh, the, the department F&B, uh, Food & Brev is also the head of uh, entertainment because we strongly believe that uh, the bar with mixology, the restaurant, shouldn't just be a beautiful place, but also something where actually life is happening all the time. So we're working on resort with programs also, but also for younger generation, the, the younger guests staying with us. So we have really, uh, we're creating crafted um, program for them to discover the locality, for discovering uh, food. So there's uh, you know pr uh, classes for the youngest uh, generation. For example, I'm thinking of Softel in Morocco, where you, you can really rely on the, the team to really bring your kids to a, a very different um, perception of the, pr of the country. They're not just in a kid's corner, but they're really embracing the, the culture of the, the place where they're staying. And this uh, the rooftop, I think, is also something which is uh, uh, now being uh, exposed more and more. And we, in each program where we have the opportunity, we're pushing them. And I think, again, this with uh, Lanzaro, we have been uh, very uh, lucky to have you on this project. If you think this is uh, the image you have behind, it's the airport of Athens. So you would think, you know, uh, going to Charles de Gaulle to a rooftop party, you would not necessarily believe that it's going to be the beast the best place to be. And I think uh, now people are, uh, you were telling me something very interesting last time, that people actually stop coming out of the Athens airport, go and have dinner at the rooftop of the Sofitel airport, and then maybe go to the city. And I think this is a tremendous story for me, uh, that they've managed to really create such a destination place on the airport location, which is not necessarily the most ex exotic to start with in Greece, but this is uh, the beauty of the design, and I think you've captured very well. So, do you want to say more on it? <laughs> well, we have a lot of things to talk about. <laughs> 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 but it's elevating 
you know, every experience, and as you say, at Athens Airport, where you, you wouldn't ordinarily find an experience like that. It's elevating even the traveling part of the process for people that are traveling as well. Um, so it's every touch point that, you know, people can have this elevated experience. Um, and what, what are your views on the role of AI and technology and how that will reshape hospitality and the spaces that we're inhabiting? How, how will that change things? Um, you talk about this, um, about technology. Well, um, I, I think there's two ways of interpreting this question. Uh, like one of them is like they, um, um, we are at the beginning of something like really big and we are seeing uh, major changes in the way we are uh, processing images. So like on one side, uh, like for instance, um, I think the students were asked to uh, like deliver something which is also related to that. Not all of them were very familiar with it, and we saw like different kind of uh, interpretations. Um, but we see in the real world every day um, this um, um, technology uh, component is helping a lot, a lot of studios to visualize um, how it's going to look like something uh, in a very fast and easy way. While we're spending uh, like a lot of uh, weeks and months uh, to create uh, real realistic renders, uh, it's very easy now to get uh, such a short of image in in a few minutes. So that is helping us on that way. Like the way you can apply that uh, into the hotels for the customers or the visitors mm -hmm. uh, is something that still need to evolve in our opinion because uh, we are uh, pretty much at the beginning and uh, I think they, they will improve probably uh, a lot of processes, uh, will make them easier, more intuitive and more interactive for the customers. But I think we still... Uh, are in a very first stage on that. I don't know what you think about that, like regarding the the product, the projects of the. We, we have to make it more simple because right now I think that sometimes in some projects we try always to be too modern to try to make a sort of investigation about the new uh, the new the, the new resources that technology gives to to have a better a better experience in the rooms and we have a, I think we have to develop it. We have to develop it. Well, I, I have to say, not about technology, it's about Sofitel, and that, because I don't want to forget it, that I think that uh, Sofitel is a brand that really, there is something that they made it so well, so well. It's, uh, they had the capacity to make an infusion of uh, the culture and um, I know, the DNA of the places where they are opening a hotel, trying to make this in fusion as well with the with the, with the French um, savoir-faire, you know, and they can transmit it. And really, it's something that you can feel in every sofitel that you go all over the world. Even if you are in Asia, or you are in Africa, or you are in America, the Casco Viejo is one of the samples. It's a, so that is really great. It's something that is not we cannot say to to too many brands, you know, because uh, it's something that you, you do it very, very well. well thank you for, <laughs> for us <laughs> as a global team. <laughs> I didn't want to uh, I think uh, this is, a, yeah, we're, we're trying to be different and yet being very local. So when you are asking, should we be global or how do we manage? I, I think this is it. exactly <laughs> the answer, I guess. So uh, we, we try with the, the service culture to bring this uh, French luxury mm -hmm. uh, refinement that we have brought over the years and we are luxuries a lot uh, hold it by French brands not only us so for sure uh, this is a differentiator and it's good that we we can continue to promote it and still being very um, uh, embracing and uh, upgrading relation with culture and different uh, matters when you, when we were talking about uh, innovation um, I think this is also why the the contest was so important because I think we are Today's um, new generation of travelers are uh, for, for luxury brands are even in the 30s, 40s. So some of us are already a bit beyond that uh, <laughs> age. And uh, it's important for us to understand from the younger generation what's their aspiration. Luxury codes are completely changing. 
they, they're not impressed by uh, beautiful marble, uh, but it's much more about experiences. And again, uh, I think it was for me uh, very interesting. We, are, we'll see, we have a stand on the, on the Maison et Objet. Next to us is the creator of the year, Lionel Jadot. He has a very different approach to what is luxury with finishes, which are all coming from uh, recycle. And I think we're moving toward this circle. And I think with the, the young generation, we'll be pushed even further and faster. To, to deliver project with this. So I think there is a, a chance. And with innovation, um, I had a chance to meet with a, a doctor in uh, IA. So we had a very thorough discussion about, you know, what is uh, marketing images, creativity? Uh, are we at risk, you know, because uh, it's so easy that anyone with you uh, in 10 minutes, you can capture the app, then say, I want to make this and that, and you get a beautiful mood board. And we spend days, months, weeks, to foster on how we could think of a place. And he was saying, you know, be, don't be nervous because there is no way IA can do whatever you do. <laughs> so I thought it was pretty eye-opening because, in fact, uh, what we do as human brain altogether is much more about layers of connaissance, experience, touches, senses. And I think that can never be beaten. So yes, there are tools. And we can monitor these tools with a uh, younger generation even faster than maybe what we would do or I would do. But certainly, uh, we have a unique chance of bridging these uh, tools which are splendid and extremely efficient together with our savoir-faire. And the moment we start merging this, there's so much creativity that is just about to happen. And I think that will even change further the code of hospitality. And I think it's, you said luxury is changing, and I think you're right. I think people's view on what luxury is, you know, it's changed for all of us. You know, our health is a luxury. You know, you know our social interaction with each other is, is a huge luxury because that was taken away from us. And, you know, these spaces that, you know, they're designed with wellness in mind, they're designed to encourage social interaction. All of these things, we're, you know, craft is a, is a, you know, is a luxury. We're appreciating things a lot more, and I'm seeing that from younger generations. And I think it's really interesting how hospitality is responding to those shifts and redefining what luxury really means today. Yeah, we are, we're really uh, listening. We're envisioning what people are expecting to be uh, at least at the, along their expectation. And even we try to be ahead of their expectation yeah. to surprise. Because today, you know, everyone has beautiful home with a lot of comfort. And they want to experience something even better and even more uh, creative and new to, when they go to a new destination, not just the location, but also the way they will sit, the way they will sleep, the way they will eat. And if we can create, you know, fantastic cocktail, you know, beautiful bar with the right lighting, with the right setting, we're already taking them to a new journey. And I think this is where, uh, and if we can put a bit of technology, I think technology is here to support also the guest experience. We had a very cute project, which I really liked, with someone saying we could have an hologram welcoming people at the entrance of the hotel. So I think this is something, why not? You know, you would be surprised being at a Sofitel entry canopy and still have this hologram. Uh, or then we're also working, uh, the whole project was about reinventing the guest journey in the public spaces in the lobby. And it was also, you know, we want to get away from one size fits all, so we want to say you want to be welcome in an armchair or you want to be uh, welcome in a fast track machine because so all of this needs to be tackled so we can really bring unique service to every guest. So you're tired, you want to go to bed, it takes two minutes, you want to have champagne and be served and enjoy a nice sofa in the garden, it's also an option. So we're trying really to break those codes, which is uh, opening uh, opportunities. Talking about uh, luxury, um, I think we could also say today sustainability is kind of a luxury. And i like to add something which has been in the DNA of the studio and Lazaro bring himself on top of the tables in the very beginning. Um, so he's encouraging uh, the whole studio to reuse some materials and to transform them into something new that is going to be durable and is going to be very uh, um, functional as well uh, when he's designing new spaces. So he's one of the, the few that already 20, 20 something years ago was recuperating like all materials like wood and metal and transforming them and turning them into something which is going to stay 
for a very long time, the longest it can on a new project. So that's very sustainable approach, but people is not talking about that. So it's like when you go to an antique uh, um, center and you're recuperating things that maybe they will go be thrown to the garbage and you turn them into something like super beautiful and serving in any beautiful project of a hotel or any other project, then you're being very sustainable. And on the other hand, one of the most important things for the studio as well, and which is also a luxury while you are designing, is that the projects we try, we intend to make, they must be timeless. So they're gonna be there forever. That is very sustainable as well because uh, then you will not need to renovate and change and waste more materials and pollute more because you have done a very proper and nice design. You have been through and thinking and reflecting on what are you going to do, so it's a timeless but project. When we talk about the time that we, we don't want to talk about uh, old fashion or even not more than, you know, we, we are very, we try to keep in uh, to keep in very to be very in touch with all the the new trends we try to introduce in our project but but no i cannot say that <laughs> um, no. he just passed me <laughs> continue <laughs> you continue sorry no so um, timeless is not uh, old fashioned no timeless is staying there forever that everyone is going to enjoy for a, for a long time timeless is to be modern right yeah, now exactly. But I think there's also thinking about ways of, you know, when it comes to renovation of, you know, hospitality spaces, when things need to be refurbished, maybe, you know, quite often, it's thinking about it from a modular perspective, maybe not, you know, having to renovate a whole room, just components of that room and, and things like that. And I think that's what we're seeing a shift more towards is, you know, this whole, whole circular mindset and younger generations are demanding it from us as well. Um, and I think that's really interesting to see, um, you know, even in sort of hospitality spaces such as, you know, cruise ships and things. I, I hosted a conference the other day and they're talking about where you can just replace, you know, components of a cabin rather than having to pull out whole cabins and, re, you know, replace the whole, the whole cabin. So I think it's, yeah, thinking about things with that longevity in, in mind um, and how things can transcend different trends that come and go. Um, we're running short on time, but I'd love to try and get um, maybe one or two, we might not have time for two, um, a question from the audience. Um, I'm sure you've probably all been thinking of them, questions whilst we've been talking. Um, if someone's got a question, don't be shy, just put your hand up and we'll uh, run a mic over to you. Does anyone have a question? There we go. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. So my question is for, for you, I suppose. In your collaboration that you did with Lazarus and Sofitel, what was perhaps like something unique that you perhaps haven't found before that you really enjoyed? Because you, you'd certainly achieved a very unique outcome in Athens, for example, where now it's become a destination to go to the hotel. And then as well in Panama, like you're saying that you were getting these really good results. So do you think that you have come up of, to us why? Should I answer? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's, it's really about trust and confidence. Uh, you know, we, we work with people we very much uh, believe in. And I think working with uh, your team has been, uh, for, for our team, has been extremely uh, easy. Uh, I only heard, you know, there's also Maison de Lano where everyone has been genuinely connecting and I think working with Lazaro directly is not the easiest one because he's traveling the world all the time. <laughs> so you have to catch him. But at the same time, his team and our team are extremely dedicated and I think there is a really an easy comprehension because of uh, your approach to the brand and the fact that we believe that you have the right codes to understand and develop our philosophy. So the, I think the more um, flexibility and openness we have together, the better we, we build. And of course, it's a link to a third party, which is a partner who is uh, instrumental you know, in building because we do not own our hotel. They're always owned by a third party. So it's important that there is this alchemy again uh, between all of us. I think this is uh, the more openness and, and uh, really trust, 
I believe we, we get and sometimes we influence a bit to you know be on the designer side to make sure that we get uh, exactly the image that you have in mind and we push for it so it's a common uh, common approach absolutely communication is key and we were talking about it uh, during lunch today remember we were saying it's like um, the most important thing is the way you're saying uh, whatever you want to to say it's, n it's even more important what, than what you're saying. It <laughs> it's the way you're saying it. <laughs> and that is working perfectly. So communication is a key when you, when you feel you trust in, in the team and you feel you are bringing out something which is going to be extraordinary and uh, hopefully it's going to work very well as well for everyone. No, but we, we know from the first minute when we make this kind of a collaboration that it's, a, it's, it's about a team, you know, team working. It's not, there is not another way to arrive to, to a nice point. It's a, it's, for us, it's very important. The communication is absolutely hand over hand the, the, the quiz of the, of the success. Um, yeah. There's so many elements too with the project, isn't there? So you have to work really sort of cohesively as a team. So we, we are completely conscious that we are not designing for us. We are designing for a brand. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, it's like a tailor, yeah. you know? It's a, we, we can give our resources, we can uh, use our tools, but at the end, in this case, it's a Sofitel. Yeah. So your product has to be a Sofitel. It's not, we, it's not, a, it's not an outdoor yeah. Work, you know, we can give the, I don't know, the touch, or you can give the, the hand like a painter, you know. But but it's a sofitel, it's a sofitel. Yeah, and that's why the open dialogue yeah. is key, you know, to ensure that you know your vision is being captured as as much as yours is. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have time for one more question, maybe. Another one just on the second row. It's a question for <coughs> for Lazaro. Uh, no, my God. Uh, <laughs> work you've done with uh, with students through that contest. Uh, I'm just wondering because we are talking about the evolution of the technology with AI in the design world, etc. But could you give us uh, your idea on how much the skills, the the capacity of students evolve today? Do you think that they are stronger today than they used to be 20 years ago, for example? Do you think that we can be uh, Optimistic about the future, thanks to that new generation of designers. Um, hundred per hundred is uh, is completely another world. And, and today we were talking about that because uh, I remember when we began twenty years ago, we, we were making the sketches, and uh, we were really very impressed. We I, I, I made this mention in the, in the beginning, uh, probably more than the talent that they have, but they had to work. Even more, even harder, is uh, for me the the level of the presentations were completely professional. So the, we can we we could feel that really they they have we, the control of the new we technologies. We could hire them. Pardon? We could hire them. Yeah. <laughs> no, really, it's, it was so. It's a very good level in most of ninety percent of the. Of the of the cases that we we studied, really, it's a very good level. Oh so yes, they are very forward in in terms of technology using AI and uh, way more than we were 20 years ago, when we used to do some hand sketching, and that was already enough, like to present a project. And we were um, also uh, like, it's funny, we were talking about that also during lunch. <laughs> it's not that we were preparing the talk, <laughs> but. Um, we said that nowadays, uh, also people start to appreciate like hand, uh, hand sketching and uh, Lazaro is using it a lot uh, to give like very fast brief and uh, so people is also still appreciating that. But what we saw on the projects, the students brought out, it was amazing. Like they are super skilled in terms of technology and the way they present everything was amazing. Well, but they have this, it's, it's a little, it's complicated. It could be an issue to have a big control about the technology because it, it's, a, it's a, maybe you can have a very nice presentation, an incredible presentation uh, with the best renderings and the best images and even with uh, animation or whatever. But at the end, there is a, there is a concept. 
So sometimes it's, ¿cómo se dice? Te, te nubla. Te, um, you're confused. Yeah, it could be confused the quality of the presentation to the quality of the concept that they are, they are presenting. But I think that we were very right with the winners, that they, because I think they, they could combine the concept and, and the presentation and, and the using of the new te technologies in the, in, the, in the projects that they presented. I think just touching on your point on optimism, I think I, I work across a lot of graduate shows um, and that's product and interior design. And I think for me, all of most of my optimism comes from students. Um, we live in a world where obviously we're dealing with, you know, lots of daunting news every day, every single day. Um, but students have a way of envisaging the future so differently. And there's a huge, huge sense of purpose. Um, I think what I would love to see more from the industry is actually larger brands and organizations doing more collaborations with students um, just to kind of give those sort of visions and that sort of almost that naivety and, and optimism, give it a, um, a, a platform to kind of radiate from. Um, because for me, <coughs> um, I get so much optimism from students. Um, but right, I think we are... The, this screen is flashing red at me, so we are um, over time massively. Um, please do stay around, because we are about to start the awards presentation imminently. Um, but firstly, thank you to the panelists um, and for your insight. And thank you to the audience um, and for the questions. Um, it's been brilliant. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much.